Welcome to Dawn Hammond's Arlington Weekly News. I'm Daniel Pineda. We have a great program this week. We have our news stories, community bulletin board, and 55 plus news. But first, a social media reminder. You can watch the Arlington Weekly News on our YouTube channel. That's youtube.com slash Arlington Weekly News and the number one. Also on Facebook and WERA 96.7 FM. And now on to our first news story for this week. Arlington County's COVID case site has reported that they now update only on a weekly schedule, with the most recent data being dated May 5th. The total case count on that day was 44,427. This constitutes an increase of 838 over the previous week. As for vaccinations, we examined Arlington County's vaccination tracker. According to that site, 199,360 Arlingtonians aged five and above have received at least one dose of the COVID vaccine. They show that figure as 87.9% of their estimated eligible population of 226,754 Arlingtonians. 27,394 Arlingtonians remain unvaccinated. Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine for 5 through 11 year olds is still available at the following locations. Arlington Mill Community Center, that's located at 909 South Dinwiddie Street and Walter Reed Community Center, that's located at 2909 16th Street South. Walk-ins for 5 through 11-year-olds are available Monday through Friday from 2 p.m. to 6.45 p.m. and Saturday and Sunday from 9 a.m. to 4.45 p.m. For more information, consult the Arlington County website. And now on to our next news story for this week. We received the following message from the Arlington County government. Arlington County's park system is ranked third in the nation by the Trust for Public Lands Park Score Index. With 99% of Arlington residents living within a 10-minute walk to a park, the importance of the county's parks was acutely felt during the COVID-19 pandemic. Arlington's more than 150 parks served as places to connect and exercise. And... They were integral in strengthening our community's mental and physical well-being. The past several years, Arlington has ranked fourth in the country. Arlington scored 79.1 points out of 100 in the Park Score Index. The calculation is based on an average of five categories reflective of an excellent city park system. Access, investment, amenities, acreage, and equity. Arlington scores near the top in the community's investment, both dollars and volunteerism, and access. The county scored about average on the percentage of the city's overall area that is dedicated to parkland and below average on park size. Arlington's park amenities score indicates the relative abundance of six park activities popular among a diverse selection of user groups. Kids, teenagers, adults, and seniors. Overall for this category, Arlington stores among the highest in the nation for its availability of basketball hoops, dog parks, playgrounds, recreation and senior centers, permanent restrooms, and spray grounds. In 2021, the Trust for Public Land added equity to the park score. This category coincides with Arlington's priority and vision. 
An equitable Arlington is one where all are valued, educated, healthy, and safe regardless of race. The equity score measures the distribution of parks between neighborhoods by race and income. This category is an average of two types of metrics. On the first set of measures, Arlington scores among the highest, 99 out of 100 points for people of color living within a 10-minute walk of a park and 99 points for low-income households. The second set of measures compares the distribution of park space. In Arlington, residents living in neighborhoods of color have access to 36% less nearby park space than those living in white neighborhoods. And residents living in lower income neighborhoods have access to 32% less nearby park space than those in higher income neighborhoods. The county continues to work on initiatives to address disparities in outcomes and foster equity in all areas. Arlington remains committed to make improvements so people of color and residents living in lower income neighborhoods have better access to park opportunities. An important step in this direction is the openings of the John Robinson Jr. Town Square and the renovation of Jenny Dean Park in the coming weeks. And now on to our last news story for this week. As part of the Arlington County Police Department's key initiatives of transportation safety, the department is again participating in the Metropolitan Washington Council of Government Spring Street Smart Campaign. This region-wide public safety campaign, which runs until May 22, 2022, focuses on educating drivers, pedestrians, and bicyclists about traffic laws and how to safely share our roadways. Through a two-pronged approach of education and enforcement, the campaign aims to reduce the number of traffic-related crashes and injuries on our roadways by identifying and changing unsafe behavior patterns among travelers. Here are some transportation safety tips for travelers. Whether you travel on foot, two wheels, or four wheels, share our roadway safely by being a pal. Predictable, alert, and lawful. If you're driving, slow down, drive the speed limit, and obey all posted traffic signs and signals. Stop for pedestrians in crosswalks. Be careful when passing buses or stopped vehicles. When turning, yield to people walking and biking. Look for bicyclists before opening your door. Allow at least three feet when passing bikes. Avoid using your cell phone and never text while driving. If you're walking, cross the street at the corner and use marked crosswalks when they're available. Use the push buttons and wait for the walk signal to cross the street. Watch for turning vehicles. Look both ways before crossing the street. Stay visible after dark and in bad weather with light colored clothing, reflective gear, and or lights. If you're biking, obey Posted traffic signs and signals. Ride in the same direction as traffic. Communicate your intentions by using hand signals. Wear a helmet, required for riders 14 years of age or younger, and recommended for all. Use headlights and taillights, especially when riding between sunset and sunrise. Our own observation is that even though the campaign will end on May 22nd, these practices should be followed all year long. Well, that does it for the news for this week. Now on to our community bulletin board stories. Hi, and welcome to CBB. Our first event comes with the following press release. Get ready for a bike to work day. It's on Friday, May 20th, and there are various pit stops in Arlington. This year's event is back and better than ever. Did we mention that the 2022 coveted free t-shirt is pink? Whether you 
you are working from home, heading back to the office, or taking your daily bike ride, we hope to see you there. Here's another announcement. Enjoy Arlington registration opens on May 17th with new features ahead of Enjoy Arlington Summer Class Registration. Arlington County's Department of Parks and Recreation is announcing new features to the registration process. The improved format will reduce wait times and help with system stability and equity. Beginning on Tuesday, May 17th, registration for Enjoy Arlington's Recreation Classes and Nature and History programs will open to Arlington County residents on a rolling basis, staggering enrollments by class type. On Tuesday, May 17th, Nature, History, and General Classes. On Wednesday, May 18th, Aquatics. On Thursday, May 19th, Gymnastics. Registration on those three days will begin at 12 o'clock p.m. and will be simultaneously available both online and by phone. Visit the Enjoy Arlington Summer 2022 catalog and register for classes online or call 703-228-4747 for voice or 711 for TTY when registration opens. Walk-in registration will begin on Friday, May 20th at 12 o'clock p.m. Available at Love Run Community Center at 300 North Park Drive. Registration for non-Arlington residents will open on Wednesday, May 25th at 12 o'clock p.m. New for this registration is an online virtual waiting room to help manage the high volume of customers and to ensure it does not exceed the website's ability to provide a responsive system experience. On registration day, log into the site as usual. All users logged in will automatically enter a virtual waiting room where they will receive a spot in line. You will keep your place in the waiting room line even if your phone goes to sleep, you lose your internet connection, or you close the virtual waiting room page, provided you log back in on the same device using the same browser. Once it's your turn to register, you will be redirected to the registration site where you can browse the site and complete your transactions at your own speed. Let's see how it works. Our third event is for kids aged 8 to 12. It's called Darting Dragonflies. Dragonflies are fierce predators that catch other insects and eat them on the fly. This is a chance for kids to get an up-close look at both adult dragonflies, nymphs, and their prey at the Gulf Branch Pond. This is a free event. The activity number is 632-822-H, and that's on Saturday, May 21st, from 1 o'clock to 2 p.m. at Gulf Branch Nature Center. Next up, game night at the Nature Center. Now this event also just happens to take place on National Pizza Party Day. So you can join a naturalist and other board game loving teens for pizza and game night at the Nature Center. You'll try out a variety of nature themed card and board games while you enjoy a slice and everyone gets to know each other. There is a cost of $5. The activity number is 632-832-B and that's on Saturday, May 21st from 5.30 to 7 o'clock p.m at Gulf Branch Nature Center. Our final CBB event is from the Arlington Public Library and it's good for all ages. It's a chance to join Arlington Public Library for a hula performance hosted by Hala Oulani. The Haumana, that is the students, will demonstrate basic hula steps, hand motions and meanings and perform traditional and modern hula. Here's a chance to learn about Hawaiian culture and enjoy the typical music and dance. This event is a part of the Asian American Pacific Islander Celebration Month. You can register online through the library website. That's on Saturday, May 21st from 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock a.m. at Sherlington Branch Library, 
4200 Campbell Avenue. Now it's time for 55 Plus News. Howdy, and welcome to 55 Plus News. Our first event is called Planning for Family Members with Special Needs. Now, if you have a family member with special needs, extra planning and care must go into your estate planning. Elder law attorney Ed Zetlin and financial planner Mark Freitz will discuss what you can do to safeguard their well-being and address their future needs. You can register online at the Parks and Recreation website. For more information, call 703-228-4747. The activity number is 913-404-07. The event is on Wednesday, May 18th from 11 o'clock a.m. to 12 o'clock noon. You gotta be 55 and up and 55 plus membership is required. This is a virtual event. Next up, the search for extraterrestrial life. Have you ever wondered about the possibility of life beyond Earth? Jennifer Lynn Bartlett, a professional astronomer and president of the Friends of the Arlington David M. Brown Planetarium, will explain how scientists calculate the probability of alien civilizations and discuss some efforts to communicate with other worlds. The activity number is 913-400-22. And that's on Thursday, May 19th, from 11 o'clock a.m. to 12 o'clock noon at Langston Center, 2121 North Culpeper Street. Next up, food allergies. In honor of Food Allergy Awareness Week, join a volunteer from the Virginia Cooperative Extension to learn about common food allergies and some tasty recipes that are allergen-free. You can register online at the Parks and Recreation website. The activity number is 913-501-07. That's on Thursday, May 19th from 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock p.m. You gotta be 55 and up, 55 plus membership is required, and this is a virtual event. For a non-virtual event, we got Acoustic Hour in the park. Here's a chance to relax and enjoy the spring weather with other 55 plus friends while listening to live acoustic music by Ed Girovasi and Phil Rosen. You can register online at the Parks and Recreation website. The activity number is 913-301-08. And that's on Friday, May 20th, from 1 o'clock to 2.30 p.m. at Virginia Highlands Park, South Joyce and 15th Street South. You gotta be 55 and up, and 55 plus membership is required. Next up, the Arlington Area Agency on Aging or AAA, promotes the maximum level of independence of persons 60 years and older and ensures that older Arlington residents live as an integral part of society, with dignity, and with access to programs and services that meet their needs and preferences. Join AAA team members to learn about the following topics. Mental health and Medicare home and community supports, and resources for older adults. You can register online at the Parks and Recreation website. That's on Tuesday, May 24th, from 10.30 a.m. to 12 o'clock noon. You gotta be 55 and up, and 55 plus membership is required. This is a virtual event. Finally, in 55 plus news, Explore the commitment, challenges, and bravery of African-American soldiers in World War II with a representative of the National Museum of the U.S. Army. Based on the museum's exhibit, Making a Way Out of No Way, the African-American Soldier Experience in World War II, the discussion will also cover the 1948 end to segregation in the military. 
You can register online at the Parks and Recreation website. The activity number is 913-400-18. That's on Tuesday, May 24th from 1.30 to 2.30 p.m. You gotta be 55 and up. 55 plus membership is required. And this is a virtual event. Anyway, that's all I got for 55 plus news. Now as a special treat, we'd like to bring back Joe Treat Frog and another installment of It's Easy Being Green. The information comes to us from our very own Adele Quo. If you have a pretty little lilac tree, let's hit the highlights on pruning lilacs and a few other maintenance items, plus some fun facts. For pruning, only prune immediately after flowering to promote better air circulation and allow time for wounds to heal before the next season. Late pruning will sacrifice the next year's flowers because lilacs set next season's flower buds almost immediately. Remove spent blooms all the way to the stems to prevent seeding and encourage more blooms later. Cutting back about a third of the branches is safe. Cut away shoots growing near the ground that may be sprouting from the main trunk. In order to improve air circulation or to allow more light to filter through, trim lilacs within the inner branches. Prune out diseased shoots right away during dry periods and remove the clippings from the area to prevent reinfection. If your lilac is just too large or becoming unsightly, it's possible to prune the entire plant to about six to eight inches off the ground. It may be necessary. It can handle this, but it takes about three years before the plant recovers from this severe pruning and can flower again. If you are pruning to within inches off the ground, it is best to do this kind of severe pruning in the early spring. Pruning on a regular basis keeps the lilac healthy and looking its best and avoids resorting to the severe pruning. Lilacs are generally pretty hardy. Next up, prevention and management. Avoid over-fertilization and excessive pruning. Lilacs are prone to powdery mildew so it's important to improve air circulation around the foliage to reduce the spread of disease by keeping moisture levels low. If you're planning to plant a new tree, remember the standard planting advice to avoid placing it near sources of reflected heat or limited airflow, such as next to walls, pavement, or solid fencing. It is okay to tolerate some plant damage. For example, Many fungal leaf spots just cause cosmetic damage. Unsightly leaves can simply be pruned off the plant. Poor growing conditions, incorrect care, weather extremes, and soggy soil are the major causes of plant decline. Finally, here are some fun facts. Lilacs are very hardy and have a long lifespan. Some live to be more than 100 years old. They often survive longer than the home of the gardener who planted them. Lilacs are part of the olive family, so they are related to olive trees, ash, privet, jasmine, and the bright yellow forsythia. In Russia, holding a sprig of lilac over a newborn baby was once thought to bring wisdom. Finally, 2022 is the year of the lilac according to the National Gardening Bureau. So remember, it's easy being green, taking care of your own pretty little lilac tree. Now I'd like to add a few words about cross-promotion. Here on Don Hammond's Arlington Weekly News, our show broadcasts on WERA-FM in Arlington, Virginia, several times a week. But we also want our listeners to know about some other fine programs on the same station. For instance, there's Traditions, a three-hour Saturday night excursion into folk music, narrated and curated by the legendary Mary Cliff. Another fine show is Joe Garon's Glow Beat. Not only does Joe bring together an amazing variety of music from all around the world, but he also has a terrific radio voice. 
Then there's Ulysses Campbell's Fantastic Forum, a show dedicated to comics, sci-fi, fantasy genres, with news, interviews, and features. By the way, Ulysses also has a great radio voice. And these are only a few of the programs listeners can find on WERA-FM, which also streams online. One final bit of news. As promised, Whitney Cronodal did perform her fundraising feat on May 6th. Drenching rain did not deter her from rappelling 14 stories down the side of the Hilton Crystal City at Washington Reagan National Airport to raise awareness and funds for AIM and WERA 96.7 FM. If you also want to support AIM's mission, increasing diversity and inclusion in community media, please join AIM at HTTPS www.arlingtonmedia.org and or make a donation. Thank you. And that concludes this week's show. We will be back next week with more news from Arlington. Meanwhile, be careful, be safe, and be well. Mm -hmm.